Pioneer student moment for Taylor School District. Mr. Williams and I met with a parent whose student was reluctant to return to school, and after a few meetings with the parent, it was decided that we would offer this student a unique schedule that allowed him to attend Truman in the morning and TVLA in the afternoon. The time at Truman would afford him some elective classes in a traditional setting, and the afternoon would allow him to work on some core classes in a more intimate setting. It's early, so we're keeping a close eye on him. I'll be speaking with the mother later this week for an update. And it's important that we look at all options to differentiate student learning in order to have each student meet with success. Thank you to um, Mrs. Skupchinski and Pat Scott for their open-mindedness and their encouragement. We also had a, a lengthy interview process this week. I had the privilege of participating in two rounds of interviews for the positions of School Improvement Coordinator and Assistant Director for Special Education. I was impressed with so many facets. First, I was thoroughly impressed with the candidate pools. All of the candidates came with vast experiences. I was also pleased to work with Pat Delatore to draft interview questions that would best showcase our interviewees' abilities to meet our district <coughs> needs. The actual process was exceptionally well organized, professional, and fair. The beauty is that the panel all had the same number one and number two top ranked candidates for both interview settings. <coughs> in and of itself speaks to the ethics and vision of this process. I'd like to thank Pat for guiding me through this important experience in the early stages of my tenure at Taylor School District. The school improvement leadership team is back in action here on North Line Road. Um, it's currently comprised of Kim Curry, Liz Biddle, Carrie Nagy, and myself, and Tracy Carroll. The team met this week to discuss assessment, evaluation, school improvement, new roles and assignments, uh, SRO expectations, and meeting protocols. I'm thrilled that we're all together and can work closely to meet the needs of the district. It makes a difference when the team is just down the hall. The proximity lends itself to rich discussions on an ongoing basis. Pending school board approval, we're eager to welcome our newest member. The plan is to have the newest school improvement coordinator be housed at Myers, where she can work closely with Mrs. Jackson and our teachers in order to work through the learning cycles and interventions with our students. Early Literacy and Math Assessment. We continue to work with our first and second grade students and teachers to prepare them for the online state testing for literacy and numeracy. The computer labs are being safeguarded to allow these students optimal access so they can practice keyboarding skills, testing skills, and testing facsimiles. Special thanks to our school improvement leadership team and Derek Canales. I was at the Myers Open House uh, last week. It was well attended and students were able to showcase their classrooms and their teachers. Mrs. Jackson did not miss a beat. She provided fun and exciting opportunities that included pizza, face painting, and scavenger hunts. Thank you to the staff for their dedication. Also, thank you to TFT Leadership for sharing class sets of dictionaries for the fifth grade students at Myers. The donor's name is a connection with TFT and her name is Mrs. Sharp. We'll ensure that she received thank you cards from all of our students. And finally, I too was at the homecoming game. I was proud to be part of Kennedy's homecoming festivities. The parade was exciting. I was on the Superior Street position to snap some great photos for our Taylor uh, Facebook and Twitter. The band, ROTC, and Royal Chorus represented as well. At the game, I was impressed with a community sense of pride. The stands were full, students were engaged, and I learned something new. They're called uh, grade level shacks or huts. It made sense to me after I scratched my head for a little while uh, that we switched to these huts for safety and efficiency reasons. The students will still get to showcase their class pride, fundraise for their class, and maintain safety as the shacks are on school grounds as opposed to being mobile in a parade. Special thanks to Kennedy leadership and staff, along with our athletic director. Thank you. Motion by Mrs. Delaney to report by Mr. Masters that we accept the superintendent and the assistant superintendent's report this evening. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 7-0. Next item. 4.01 committee report. You want to have a committee report? Yeah, I do. Finance committee. We had uh, today, uh, we just went over uh, this the approval of the financial uh, report, or no, no, that we were the financial reports for review for August uh, 2016. Uh, count updates and the DEP updates. This audience participation. Uh, we have not scheduled a uh, another meeting yet. We'll do that in a future meeting. That is it. Okay. Any motion? motion by Mrs. Salinas, by Mr. Masters, that we accept the finance report or finance or committee reports. I'm sorry. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes. 
5.01 next item. 5.01 special education sims in time the IEP presentation. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, for those of you that know me, I tend to be long-winded, so I did write down so I stay in a, a little bit of a timeline here, but I have to say that I'm really excited because um, this is going to end up being a celebration instead of, I think, what the state was expecting um, it to be me letting you know what we're not up to par on, according to their eyes, and we kind of had the last laugh, so I'm going to go ahead with this, and, and you can hear what happened. Um, it's my job at this point, it's something new that the state's asking us to do, is to explain to you the continuous improvement and monitoring system for special ed. It's called SIMS, and special education directors across the state have to report um, after the state lets you know what they're watching you for. Um, it's uh, described on their website as the system used by the state to promote positive outcomes and ensure compliance with the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act of 2004 and the Michigan Administration <coughs> Rules for Special Ed, which are called MARS. It was decided to help, designed to help locals analyze and interpret data and keep track of all monitoring activities in a single location. SIMS consists of 14 strands, and those a lot of those strands have substrands under them. They look at anything from timely IEPs keeping track of the educational environment, which is actually the amount of special education students you have in different percentages of special ed and general ed, um, to child find. And child find is our responsibility as a district to um, watch for students that we feel could benefit from special ed services. Um, this year they asked us, and I'm going to deviate here for a minute, this year they were asking us to look at timely IEPs. Um, they, in Wayne County, almost every school district in Wayne County was cited for timely IEPs, meaning they had IEPs that were not done within the annual 364-day timeline. Um, in Taylor, we did receive one of those letters. I took a whole weekend and went through student by student, <coughs> looked up files, IEPs, whatever I had to do, and they told us that we would have to write what they call a CAP, a corrective action plan. They don't want you looking at student or at teachers and or staff and what they're doing wrong. They look at, want you to look at your policies and procedures. So we went forward with that. We wrote a CAP. I called our team together. And um, I, like I said, I sent back to the state, color-coded, as we were asked to report back to them, color-coded and read what they had done wrong instead of what we had done wrong. And basically what happened was that the majority of the um, students that we had issues with, when you say, for instance, a student's IEP is due this Friday, and one of my teams would have an IEP on Wednesday for that student, it would go into the system, be loaded into the system. If, for instance, that student has some behavior problems and two months from now we have an IEP for them because we want to write a behavior plan and we feel that we need to do an IEP with that behavior plan, that date now is entered into the system. When Dan uploads that doc, those documents, which he has to do after each count day, the reports that the state received showed only the most recent IEP and did not show the <coughs> IEP that took care of the timeline. Therefore, saying that a lot of our IEPs were not uh, done in the 364-day timeline. Um, the other issue was students that we have enrolling in the school district, they might come to us with a two-year-old IEP. We can't just say to those students, you have a two-year-old IEP, we're not going to service you until you test, we test you. We have to put that date into the system. We are automatically found out of compliance for that student even if it's a Woodhaven Brownstown IEP. So I was able to report on all of those. Last Monday, when I was preparing to come here, because I was going to do this last Monday, um, I was very happy to find a letter, which they no longer let the superintendent nor the uh, special ed director know that they're putting new letters in. I checked with recent just to make sure there wasn't a glitch. No, they expect us to go in and, and just try to find them. Um, 
there was a letter there that our cap has, has been pulled, which I had already um, sent to them. We are no longer under a timely IEP corrective action plan. Our name has been dropped for the list. We are all good to go. Yay. So I, was, I, I, I know I have to I watch myself, but I can't say enough about the special ed staff in Taylor. I have been in Taylor for um, 33 <laughs> years now. And um, I've always been in the special ed department. I've never left the special ed department, and I love every single person we have in, in there. Um, the, our other two successes that I would like to speak about, um, I'm not required to talk about at this time, but I'm going to let everybody know. Um, every other year, the state looks at disproportionality of special education students that are suspended and or expelled by demographics. They look at race, they look at gender, they look at age, they look at disability. Um, I would say that probably about 90% of the school districts in the state um, have findings in this area of, um, of discipline. Two years ago, they're, and they're always two to three years behind on the information. So the first year I was director of special ed, we had a finding that was on students and discipline that would, happened before I was in the position. We had three findings in our files, and what they do is they send you a list of um, about 15 students. We pull their files, we bring them in, two people from the state and a person from the county comes in, they pull eight files, and they look at your <coughs> policies, procedures, and the paperwork that's in those files for the students that are suspended and expelled. That year we had three findings. We had to write a corrective action plan, we had to go through our policies and procedures, we had to bring um, the administration and the schools up to date on the forms that needed to be filled out, how they had to be filled out, when they had to be filled out. And um, we again were on that list um, last year. We pulled the files. We were in here. They pulled eight files. They could not find one thing wrong with our paperwork. So I have to say I'm really proud of our staff for that. And the other thing that we um, are required to do every May, we have to pull 30 files for the transition section of students that are 16 years or older of, for their IEP. It's a three-page section of the IEP for <coughs> students that are 16 year, years old or older. And we, they go through a screening process. There's a lot of work for them to do with their, um, their educational development plans, what they want to do in the future. There are separate goals in that plan, separate from the um, behavioral and or academic goals in the rest of the IEP. They have to, the state is getting very, very picky. They have to be worded in a very specific way. Um, we pulled 30 files. Uh, Jamie Aola is our transitions coordinator. Her and myself go through every file. We have to self-report on 15 aspects of those three pages of the IEP. We self-report and then they tell us which number they say pick number five, we have to upload the whole IEP to the county and the state. And we had no findings in that either. So um, I am very pleased and proud of the work that the special ed staff has done um, with a lot of harping from me over the last three years. But it, um, you know, it's going well. Our main focus in special ed, just like every other person in this district, is the student and we will make sure that we're doing everything that's appropriate for that student. And I'm going to just close with a little story that I heard at the conference that I went to. We had the um, director of special ed that was honored at the Mays conference up north, and he thanked, when, when we go to that conference, because special ed is so much legalese, it's lawyer after <coughs> lawyer after lawyer up there that we go see to make sure we're all on the correct page. And that director got up and he said, I want to thank all the lawyers that are in the room. He said, and what he remembered the most was his first year as a special ed director. And we do this all the time. He called his attorney and he said, okay, this is the problem and this is what I'm doing. He said, I do this and this and this and I checked with Mars, Michigan Rules, I checked with IDEA Federals and I think I'm right. And the attorney said, you are right, but what's best for the child? And so I think as long as we're doing what's best for the child, as long as we're following the law, but what is best for the child, 
sometimes you have to go above and beyond and, and do what that is. And I think that we do a great job of that in Taylor. So yes, I am up here. I'm educating you on what the state wanted, but we're celebrating here because I'm not bringing you bad news, I'm bringing you good news. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.